Almost one year ago, global strategist against ISIS and al-Qaeda, the Iranian general Qasem Soleimani was murdered on the orders of US President Donald Trump with no condemnation from NATO nations. We speak to the daughter of the general credited with arguably saving countless lives from Washington to London in a going underground world exclusive first interview as Joe Biden's national security advisor designate threatens a coalition against Iran from January. All this and more coming up in the penultimate show of this season, but first, the UN Special Rapporteur Agnes Kalamar has concluded that the USA unlawfully assassinated Iranian General Qasem Soleimani using an Obama-era-style drone strike on Baghdad airport. The assassination was condemned by UN Security Council members Russia and China, but not France and Britain. Here is Soleimani's daughter Zainab speaking at her father's funeral in Tehran, the largest since revolutionary leader Grand Ayatollah Khomeini. خانواده های سربازان آمریکایی در غرب آسیا که شاهد ذلت آمریکا در نبردهای سوریه، عراق و لبنان و افغانستان و یمن و فلسطین بودند در انتظار مرگ فرزندانشان روزهایشان را سپری خواهند کرد. آقای ترامپ قمار باز ترامپ تدبیر شیطانی تو در جدایی و تفرقه میان دو ملت ایران و عراق با خطای استراتژیک تو خاک به خون خون کشیدن دو مجاهد بزرگ موجب اختلاط خون مجاهدان بزرگ ابو مهدی و حاج قاسم که موجب پیوند تاریخی بین دو ملت ایران و عراق شد و تنفر جاودانه آنها را علیه آمریکا برانگیخت دیروز پارلمان عراق خروج آمریکا را از عراق کلید زد ترامپ دیوانه که خود نماد جه و بازیچه دست صهیونیسمی خیال نکن با شهادت پدرم همه چیز تمام شد رهبرم پدرم دو پدری داشت که در کنارش بود در کنارش ایستاد و ما هم and Zainab Soleimani, the daughter of assassinated General Qasem Soleimani, now joins me from Tehran in a world-exclusive interview, her first since her father was killed on the orders of Donald Trump. Thank you so much, Zainab, for coming on. Uh, can I just start by asking you, January the 3rd was the day of the assassination. How did you first hear of the killing of your father? Hello there, and thank you for having me. Um, if I want to start to, by answering this question, I have to say that that terrible night uh, before a few hours that this happened for my father, I hear and I spoke with him on the phone and then I left uh, to visit my family. I was alone and I go to my sister's house. And I knew it, that the situation in Iraq was uh, so dangerous and the situation was different. And it wasn't like before. Uh, so I add a channel for the news in Iraq in my telegram. And I watched the news in Iraq. Exactly about uh, 1 a.m. I see a video is sharing on that channel telegram about an explosion in airport Baghdad. And I opened, but I didn't know who was that and uh, what happened. So uh, I had a phone call after that. I hear uh, from one of our friends, he was asking for my father, that where is he, is he okay or no? And as usual, that I answered like this on the phone. I said for him, he's sleeping in the house because I didn't trust the phone. So I said, he is sleeping in the house and uh, he feel relieved and he told me okay thanks god it's because i hear a news that there is explosion in airport baghdad and your father was in the car and they hit it so i got so shocked and full of stress like my heart was going out from my chest and i didn't know what to say i just told him can you check please for me he said why uh, you told me that your father is sleeping in the house. I told him I was wrong and I need you to check for me to see where is he, if, if you can find him. And I couldn't believe till about 5 a.m. I couldn't believe that this happened. So 
about 5 or 6 a.m. when I turned on the TV and I saw his picture, I, I understand what happened. And uh, from that day till now, I'm still shocked about what happened. It's so hard to believe. Here in Britain and across NATO countries, we saw the news reported as a victory, the news of your father's death. I know that months before, he was considered a hero in the fight against Al-Qaeda and ISIS Daesh, even in NATO nation media. How did he go from being this hero to suddenly being a terrorist? Even Lloyd Austin, the new Joe Biden Pentagon pick, said he was great in combating ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Suddenly he went from hero to terrorist. Why? Uh, well, all of us know this, that Al-Qaeda, ISIS, they are a group of terrorists that America made them. And we have many proofs for that. And my father was the only person who was standing in front of such a terrorist groups. Of course, they are not happy for, my, for that, that my father is standing in front of such a groups because they made it. They made it to start a war in the Middle East. And they use it to start hurt, hurting people and taking their houses, their jobs, their money, their countries. Of course, they are not happy for my father is standing in front of them and destroying them everywhere. And uh, you know this, that, and, and I know also, uh, recording that uh, Julian Assange, uh, the founder of Wikileaks, he exposed the email. Uh, that uh, Jack Sullivan was telling Hillary Clinton uh, that Al-Qaeda is on our side in Syria. Okay, that seems, that shows, and this man is still in the prison. Why? Because he exposed them. And he said for everyone that such a group terrorists that are killing people, innocent people in the Middle East, America made them, and they are like toys for them. The, the life of people, innocent people, are like toys for them. They attacked everyone, everywhere. And of course, they are not happy that my father is standing in front of them and every plan they are making in Middle East, my father destroy it. And he changed this game. He was the winner of this game and he destroyed them. Of course, they are not happy and they kill him so easy in another place in an air, international airport, he was the guest of Iraqi people. They invite him to help them. How they dare to kill an official general of a country. They kill it easy and they said, we kill it and we proud. Why they are proud? Because they kill someone like General Soleimani that he was destroying all their plans, all the money they were putting on the Middle East, my father destroyed their plans. Of course, they will be happy if they kill him and they will proud. And, you know, uh, of course, they will say he was a terrorist uh, because the, in their mind, my father, because he was destroying the people they created, he's a terrorist. Because he was saving innocent people's lives. He is a terrorist. Who is the terrorist here? They made these groups. They attacked people. They kill people easily, everywhere. They are the terrorists. Jake Sullivan, the former Clinton official, now picked to be Joe Biden's next National Security Advisor, of course, Julian Assange, uh, alleged by the UN to be being tortured near this studio. But uh, you know that our viewers will be thinking, why would the United States, which suffered during 9-11, support Al-Qaeda and ISIS Daesh? What, what, what did your father tell you about why he thought the United States would support those who had destroyed the World Trade Center in 2001 and attacked the Pentagon? Well, I have to say that my father believed he must to stand in front of those power that they are, they are trying to take the people's power to free their freedom, their grants. 
And uh, he always spoke with us about that he must to stand in front of United States because he is creating something like, like a virus everywhere, like this sickness is getting everywhere. He is coming to every country and taking their power, stealing their, their anything, anything they have, they are taking from them. And they are saying, uh, we didn't know about them and we don't know them and we will destroy them. They are liars. I will say they are liars, big liars. They pay for them. They give them army and they give them any stuff they need to stand in front of people in Yemen by support of Saudi. They let Saudi pay for them and they are making a group terrorists to stand in front of Yemen people to take their freedom, to take their grand, to steal anything they have. Everywhere, we, when, we are, we, when we watch our eye, when we open our eyes, we see that they are, this virus, this sickness is everywhere. In Syria, in Lebanon, they support Israel to head Lebanese people. Why? Why they are looking to stall people countries? Just because the money? What they are looking for? And my father believed he must to stop them. And he did so well. That's why they kill him. That's why they took my father out from their way. Because they knew they can't stop him anymore. The United States denies that it supports Al-Qaeda or ISIS. Britain says it is giving aid to the people of Yemen even while it sends weapons uh, to bomb, to bomb uh, Yemen. Why would Donald Trump say that your father was a monster? Well, of course, at first, he is the monster, not my father. And second, uh, I will say uh, my father did his job so well and make them so angry. You are seeing every plan they are making in the Middle East is destroyed. Everywhere they are trying to enter and hurt Iran, they are failed. Why? Of course for them, my father is a big monster. But my father is a savior. He saved people. Not just his own country. He did this for all countries. He did this for people. Not just Middle East. He destroyed ISIS because he don't want people, in, people innocent in Europe got killed by such a dangerous virus. They are, he, he did this. He fight for everyone. Not just Syria, Yemen, uh, Lebanon, Iran, Iraq. No. He did this for all. He fights for all. Till, the, till his last breath, he didn't stop. He know this way he is going, it's so dangerous. And he might get killed. He know this way, uh, this thing so well. But he didn't stop because he wasn't afraid from them. They were afraid from him. They were so afraid from my father. They know how he will act, how he respond and they know so well he will beat them. For uh, Trump, my father is a monster. Zainab, I'll stop you there. More from the daughter of the late Iranian military commander, General Qasem Soleimani, after this break.